Hi, I'm your host, Sofiel Bharti, and welcome to our series on tech predictions for 2021. Our next oracle is Deepak Giridhar Gopal, CTO of Puppet. Uh, Deepak, first of all, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for being uh, letting me be here. Yeah. Uh, before I ask you to pick up your crystal ball, can you please tell me a bit about Puppet? Sure. So Puppet is, uh, we've been in the systems automation, infrastructure automation, security, compliance uh, game for a pretty long time. Uh, we've got a lot of strong roots in open source, and we started as an open source project uh, about 10 years ago. And ever since then, we've really been trying to help more customers uh, deploy software more quickly, manage their infrastructure as scale, uh, and otherwise just uh, free them up so that robots can do things that humans can't, you know, and let the software work for you instead of against you. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Deepak, now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell me what prediction you have for 2021. Yeah, well, the first one is, I think, um, the massive amplification of a trend I saw in 2020, which is just the use of automation to reduce the amount of manual toil, where that's always been something I think companies have been interested in. Um, but given what's been going on in 2020 and with the pandemic, I think the with all of this unknown, uh, the only real guarantee coming up on the horizon uh, that I see is that organizations, I think, need to do more to automate all kinds of infrastructure stuff as a means of future proofing against uncertainty, uncertainty in the economy, uncertainty in labor markets, and frankly, as a way to help take pressure off of IT workers. I think very related to that is, you know, I think 2020 also saw a pretty big shift of workloads uh, into the cloud. But I think what happened as a consequence of that is much of that scramble in 2020 was focused on day one, you know, just getting things up and running in these new kinds of platforms, these new kinds of environments. But now in 2021, I think you see the consequence, uh, which is day one is over. Now day two and the rest of the life of these applications has begun. Uh, and people are now going to be faced with what's required in order to just deal with all of these things. And I, I believe that's where I have a strong point of view on the use of automation to help manage these things day two and beyond, the use of smarter tools that can respond to events and have more automated responses, more reactive uh, automation, I think will be increasingly critical. Um, and I think people are going to start feeling that pressure in 2021 to better manage, automate, and secure their stuff as a consequence of all the flurry of activity and movement in 2020. Uh, other things that I see, uh, the next big thing that I anticipate in 2021 would be the, what I foresee is the democratization of site reliability engineering. You know, the, the rise of SRE has been something that I think a lot of uh, companies have seen, you know, the intersection between that and DevOps. And there's been an increasing demand for these skills of people that can automate things uh, at a really high level of sophistication and excellence. However, I also think part of the consequence of that flurry of activity in 2020 and this increased complexity of applications has resulted in the situation where there's not enough SREs to go around. Um, and there's way more applications out there that need to be automated in that way than there are people that you can immediately hire off the street to some random company and hit the ground running. So I think 2021, what we're going to see is uh, an attempt to, to, to democratize that skill set and figure out ways to get those skills in the hands of a broader set of people in IT. And I think we're starting, I think we'll start to see more vendors and um, more markets potentially be created around more uh, versions of tools and uh, ways of solving problems that SREs and DevOps engineers have done, but putting that in a more user-friendly package so that the masses can take advantage of it. Uh, I think automation can no longer be the purview of this small niche set of folks that are experts. We just don't have the time <laughs> and the uh, we have greater needs now and we don't have the time to just wait. So I think tools and vendors, you'll start to see help do that. Next one that I have is uh, I foresee there being a uh, what I'm calling kind of a, a shift to people thinking about like incident response 2.0, uh, which is kind of this evolution of um, how people thought about responding to an instance before where, you know, it was mostly about escalation, you know, who to wake up, who to notify when things go wrong. But I think now in 2021, as applications have become more complex, I think the actual escalation component 
becomes a smaller part of overall a much more gnarly debugging and remediation process. So collecting forensic data from a bunch of data sources, rendezvousing with ticketing systems, triggering the right automation. Uh, these are tricky problems that have only gotten trickier. So systems and incident response tools that incorporate this as part of their mandate, I think will become increasingly important as the applications themselves get more involved and more sprawled out. Um, so, you know, if you can only fix bugs at the speed of how quickly you can call somebody when something goes wrong, you're going to be limited in how quickly you can respond to issues. And the number of issues is going up, especially as complexity goes up. Uh, and the last one that I'll throw out there is, uh, you know, it's the most techie one, but it's one I, I actually believe kind of strongly, or at least I want to believe in it. Um, and that's, I think, I believe that 2021 uh, should see a heightened increase in interest in secure kernels. Uh, and the reason for this is, I think, modern application platforms, and I'm building a lot of these myself, it, it makes it easier than ever to build these sophisticated multi-tenant apps that dynamically adapt to load and usage. Uh, and this is definitely true for platforms like Kubernetes or workflow engines like Tekton. But that presents a lot of challenges with, ex with respect to isolating one tenant's workloads, and data, and compute from others residing in the same platform. So this is true for I'm a startup and I want to sell a multi-tenant service, or I'm a big financial company and I want to segregate different teams' workloads like it, it, for security reasons. So projects like Gvisor or Firecracker, I think, are, are really interesting kind of um, not necessarily bleeding edge, but they're definitely cutting edge. Uh, technologies that are designed to plumb into the depths of the tech stack as much as they can, these isolation primitives and security primitives uh, that I think people are going to increasingly need. It's going to need to become a critical part of the stack, uh, especially if I look forward to adoption of things like more, um, more of these complicated cloud native applications that live on these shared platforms. Um, having that level of isolation and security, I think, is going to become increasingly important. So that was optional before. Increasingly, I'm talking with folks where that's just part of the stack now. And I haven't heard too many people talking about it. So um, that's a trend I'm interested to see evolve. Now, can you tell me a bit about the focus of Puppet in 2021? So there's a couple of different fronts, I think, that we're really interested in exploring in 2021. I think number one is taking a lot of our products and re, you know, kind of... Um, uh, really putting the platform aspect of everything we do front and center, uh, because as we started to see from customers in throughout 2020, is they're using our technology as this fabric that allows them to automate things across all of their systems, wherever they are. And once you have that fabric in place, the very next question for a lot of companies that we saw last year, and a lot of our customers were trying to build um, kind of custom ways of doing automation, tailoring the tools to how they're getting their work done and having those tools be flexible enough to match all the different, uh, you know, kind of uh, the different ways of doing work that people had to go through in 2020. So 2021, we see that trend continuing. And I think we're going to really try to lean in to giving people more of that fabric that lets you kind of reach out and touch systems no matter where they live, whether that's in the cloud or a data center or on the edge, whether it's a container, whether it's a VM. Uh, to us, it doesn't matter, but to our customers, having that single unified way of addressing systems is going to be pretty huge. Um, I, I think the other major focus areas are uh, the two, the the three that I'll mention. Are uh, first is again as I said um, one of my predictions was trying to go more um, mass market in terms of letting more people automate more things uh, so that's been a big focus of some of our most recent uh, product development which is really around taking a lot of that core open source technology that we have in things like Puppet or Bolt uh, and then figuring out a way to bundle that together in a much more easy to use package that a single team. Uh, could just quickly get up and running and get installed, and then they could start automating right away. Uh, the next area would really be around security and compliance, where um, you know that's only going to be a, a bigger deal. And what we've seen our, a lot of our customers tell us is that as they've moved to the cloud, there's a lot of open questions around what it even means to be compliant with these novel kinds of architectures. So um, we've recently released Puppet Comply, uh, which helps with that. And we're starting with things like CIS benchmarking, but that's going to be a tremendous area of uh, investment for us in uh, in 2021. And then lastly, a continued focus uh, on the more um, 
for the more advanced users out there, really that focused on event-driven uh, automation, responsive and reactive automation. So platforms that could listen for events that are coming from these really complicated platforms, public clouds and architectures, and then have that automatically drive all kinds of automation so that your ability to manage systems now moves at the speed at which your platform can move, not the speed of when you can close a ticket or when you get a pager alert or uh, when you do a git commit, which I think for a lot of teams, even a commit is too slow to keep up with the pace of what's going on. Uh, so those are the major areas that we're focusing on for 2021. Uh, Deepak, thank you so much. Uh, uh, as I said, I would love to have you back on the show uh, to talk about your predictions in 2021. And um, uh, once again, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much.